I don't know if this lady's video ever came across y'all's For You page, but she got on TikTok asking the married people that follow her how they got their partner to see the value in marrying them. She's in a relationship with a man who apparently does not see the value in making her his wife. She wanted to know how or what she could say or do to get him to see the value in them eventually getting married. And I'm going to respond to this video and I would love to tell you about my marriage and my husband and how amazing he is and how he goes out of his way to make every special occasion special and he celebrates every holiday and he doesn't come up with excuses as to why Valentine's Day is stupid or why he shouldn't have to buy flowers and how he's the best man in the world that I've ever met, right? I could tell you all the romantic things and it would be very valid and very sweet. But I would rather tell you about my mom because I think it'll have a more lasting impact. I would describe my mom as a woman who had a deep desperation to be loved. I would go as far as to say that her desperation to be loved and cherished and valued was literally woven into the fabric of who she was as a human being. And I spent my entire life, my entire childhood, my entire adolescence, my all of my teen years, all of my early adulthood, watching my mom sit around and try to convince the men that she was with to see the value in being with her. I sat around watching her beg them to love her, beg them to respect her, beg them to value her, and it never happened. Because you see, there is no issue with having a desire to be loved, but there is an issue with having a desperation to be loved because nothing good comes out of being desperate. I watched my mom forgive my dad for every single affair he had throughout the course of their marriage. I watched my mom get in relationship with boyfriend after boyfriend after boyfriend. I watched her beg the first boyfriend to see value in being loyal to her. I saw her beg the second boyfriend to see value in speaking to her like a human being. And I saw her beg the third one to not beat her in the face and knock her teeth out. And I watched her forgive and forgive and forgive and stay and stay and stay. Because my mom always convinced herself that she had more time. So it didn't matter if she spent 15 years trying to convince my dad to love her. It didn't matter if she spent five years with this boyfriend or seven years with this boyfriend trying to convince them to love her. Because she always had more time to get it right. And then all of a sudden, my mom woke up one day and was 49 years old with fewer teeth in her mouth than she should have from having boyfriends knock them the out with headaches that are more severe than they used to be from having her head bashed into walls and her face punched with relationships with her children that were less than what they should have been, less than what they could have been. Relationships with her children that were borderline destroyed by the men that she was desperate to be loved by. And she was dying. She was laying in a hospital bed in the midst of the COVID pandemic, unable to be visited by her family, with her life flashing before her eyes as she was being notified that she was going to have to be placed in a medically induced coma. And you see me, I've always been the hard. I'm the one who will say what nobody else will say. I'm the one who will tell the truth when everybody else is trying to tiptoe around the subject. And that always made my mom so mad. I always believed all my life that my mom thought that that was the worst quality about me was the fact I couldn't shut the up. <laughs> I'm gonna say how I feel. I'm gonna tell you what it is, whether you like it or not. It was never agreeable. I've never been passive. And it would cause such tension with my mom's boyfriends and me. And my mom so desperately wanted me to just keep the peace with them. Just let them do and say whatever. And you just put your head down and don't say anything. And me and my mom's boyfriends have fist fought because I'm not going. <laughs> But I did. I always believed that that was a characteristic of my personality that my mother hated, despised. But when my mom found herself dying in the hospital, I remember she texted me. It was right before she was going to be put into a coma. And she sent me a text message. And at that point, I was pregnant with my son and I had already had my daughter. And I remember she texted me. And I remember she texted me. And she apologized for everything that had ever happened. And she told, I'm sorry. And she told me how sorry she was. And she told me that no matter what happened, for me to make sure that I kept that fiery spirit about me. And she told me that no matter what happened, to make sure that I raised my kids, especially my daughter, to be that exact same way for me not to sit around and wait on nobody for me not to sit around and beg nobody and it was in that moment that I realized that my mom was laying in the hospital all by herself regretting her life regretting the decisions that she made because not one of those men 
was anywhere to be found when it came down to it because they didn't value her. Her being a good woman to them didn't get them to see it. Her begging and crying didn't get them to see it. And ultimately her dying didn't get them to see it either. I remember I hadn't talked to my dad in years and he called out of nowhere after my mom had died, like months after my mom died. And he was just trying to have conversation as if nothing happened. How you been, girl? How's married life? I heard you having another baby. This man hadn't talked to me in like seven years at that point. And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing all right. It's just been kind of hard. And he's like, what's well, been hard? What's the matter? So at that point, I'm just thinking he's out the loop, right? And I'm like, well, you know, mama died. You know, that man said, oh, yeah, I heard about that. Other than that, how you been? And it was in that moment that I realized that my dad not only didn't value my mother as a wife, or didn't value my mother's feelings. He just didn't value my mom's life in general. That man spent over 15 years with her and her existence in his life was summed up to nothing more than, oh yeah, I heard she died. Besides that, you'll never get a man that does not value you to value you. He might start acting better for a little while if he thinks you're gonna leave, but he'll never value you. So what you do? is you move on. You cry about it, you scream about it, you eat an entire tub of bluebell ice cream over it. And you tell yourself you'll never move on. And then you do. Because the only thing worse than like wasting 10 years with somebody who you come to realize doesn't value you is choosing to waste another 20 because you're too scared to start over. And I hope and pray that your situation is not nearly as extreme or abusive as my mom's was. But also, never believe that it couldn't be you. Because my mom, too, started out as nothing more than a young woman who was sitting around wondering what she could do and what she could say to get the first man that she had ever been with to see value in being with her. And it only got worse from there. A man worth marrying will see the value in marrying you all on his own. Not to mention the fact that my mom was a married woman two different times. Not all rings are bought with love. And somebody finally being coerced into buying you a ring does not mean that they have magically woken up one day and found the value in being with you. Most of the time, they're just trying to get you to shut up. You don't want a shut up ring. And my mama wouldn't want you to want one either. So my advice is to dump it. It'll be sad, but it'll get better before you're married. Promise.